obviously I can't tell you exactly what's going to be on an exam, but I can give you some hints of stuff that might be helpful. And whether or not this shows up on my exam, I think that this is also helpful for all exams. Um, I don't think I have to make any corrections. I think I only left out one or two things and then I've got a couple of things that are just lingo issues. So this will go pretty fast today. First of all, population is a number. And so of all the units, this is the one that has the most math. Now it's not algorithms you have, to, it's not like rule of set, it's not like stuff that you have to memorize how it works. Most of it is just simple calculation, moving your zeros and stuff. So a couple of suggestions for you, if you don't mind. Um, first of all, practice scientific notation. So 7 billion, write it out, count the zeros. That's what goes up there. Um, remember that 25 per 1,000 is if you move the decimal, 2.5% because that's 2.5 per 100, right? You can do the same thing for 312 per 10,000 or whatever. Um, remember that 5% of something is the same as 5% times. So when you see of, that means multiply. And um, now that I've given you some math hints about math you should be ready to do, I should probably caution you to go slow. Like with my boy, he's always trying to show off. We have like math culture in my house. And so my boy's always like, watch this. And I'm like, dude, go slow, you'll be right. And he's like, no, no, I got it. And then he just rushes. And he often makes mistakes when he's rushing. So biggest advice I can give you, which is the same thing I tell my son, is go slow with your math. Like write it out. Like add the steps, be obnoxious. Imagine you're showing it to a 10 year old. Like be careful with your places, make sure that you count your zeros when you move your decimal on the top, make sure that you move your decimal on the bottom or whatever. Um, you can do it. The math is not horrible. You don't have to be good at math. You can do this now. Um, it's, a, it's a truism. I think I just mentioned it in a previous video that children are more delicate than adults. And we probably all know that intuitively, but maybe you can't explain it. There's three good reasons. One of them is the fact that kids practice less hygiene. That's not supposed to be malicious. They're just more distracted. It's normal. Kids lick everything and touch everything and they're just moving more. Also, they have a smaller body. So a shot of tequila is not gonna get me drunk, but a shot of tequila for a four-year-old will really mess with their brain because you distribute that alcohol into a much smaller body and that can be very dangerous for a child. But you know, I got a huge old body. I am like, I don't know, 10 four-year-olds. So I'm not worried about that. Um, this is true for all toxins. Uh, this is why there's like baby aspirin. It's just grown up aspirin, just in a more diluted form. Um, and remember that they're not fully built yet. They're still developing. So like if I have brain damage and I lose a brain cell, don't worry, I've got a few others. But if a baby loses a brain cell, that cell might've grown into a whole branch of their brain, right? So like if I lose one brain cell, I've got the rest of that region in my brain. I can probably keep doing those functions. But in a child, that one cell might have given birth to like a whole bunch of other cells. So damaging one means you've robbed the child of all that potential development. So um, we do worry much more. Now that we're talking about toxicology, we worry much more about children than we do about adults. Um, finally, speaking of toxicology, remember that the reason that things get stored in your body is your cells aren't picky. They're not intelligent. They don't harvest sugar in particular. They just look for the carbon. 
So that's what you should look out for, the carbon. If you want to know the toxins we're worried about, they're the one with a carbon in it, followed by whatever, it doesn't really matter, or we call them hydrocarbons. Again, the danger is because of carbon or any compound that is methyl something or other. I don't care what it is. If it's methyl anything, that's going to be dangerous because your body will accumulate it. That will get into your cells. You know, if you eat a whole bunch of glass marbles, you just poop them out. Like your, your body just watches them go by. And that's true of most chemistry. But it just so happens that carbon has four bonding sites. So it's like really nice to do like organic chemistry. You can stick whatever you want on a carbon. And so for scientists, we do a whole bunch of industrial chemistry based on carbon. And anytime you hear industrial chemistry, you're supposed to go like, whoa, wait a minute. If that's based on carbon, I know that's danger because bioaccumulation, because stupid cells, uh, they're the ones that are going to accept things with carbon. So look out for things that have carbon. That's the stuff that bioaccumulates. Um, a term I've used always showed up on an exam slightly differently than I searched for it and I found it on another exam. So bioremediation is when living things solve a problem. And twice the College Board has called that environmental remediation, which means the same thing, right? Things in the environment solve the problem. So topsoil absorbs water and prevents flooding or um, vegetation along a creek soaks up nutrients to prevent um, eutrophication. That's called environmental remediation as well as bioremediation. Dental reminders about the exam. I say this every time, just saying, please use full sentences. Please answer the parts separately and label them. Please make sure that you're doing what the word told you to do. Maybe a dozen kids lost maybe 20 to 30 points overall on this previous exam because they listed or identified when they were asked to explain. If it says which, then you say this one or that one, right? Because it's just asking you to say which one. But if it says describe, you need adjectives and adverbs. Like you have to say things about the thing. So, you know, like hair is short and grain or whatever. Descriptive words, it doesn't have to be a fancy description, it just has to be descriptive. Uh, remember to contrast or compare means that you're like comparing one thing to another. Explaining means you're like answering how questions or why questions. And last of all, the exam you're gonna take tomorrow will be the first part of your term four grade. Sorry, I, this whole thing about terms and semesters and quarters. Anyway, I'm at term four. This will be the first part of your term four grade. Okay, I am done. It is so, so late. I am so, so tired and I got sunburned today. So I gotta go. <laughs>